particularly the cloud condensation and nuclei from Professor Panitrai, uh, new particle formation from Dr. Gizek, and biorezol from uh, Dr. Sutli. And also, now just we see very innovative and good talk. Actually, I have to myself get upgraded or get so much knowledge in this one. I cannot comment on anything because there are many in depth studies. So, what I am going to take you in different way. In fact, what you study at the surface property or at the aerosol property at the surface, I am going to tell that how this aerosol, when it is goes to the free troposphere and even it goes to the upper troposphere and, and also in the stratosphere, how these are actually going to modify the different uh, the dynamics and structures of the atmosphere. And also useful in that now you can connect, oh, this can be also many, many things can be done to what we are studying at the surface. So here, what I will be discussing in much that most of the result is came from the microprocessor. And the complementary instrument such as uh, the satellite born this uh, Calypso observation, as well as we have we are fortunate that we are located very near to the in, uh, Indian Meteorological Department, so we have this surface observation, uh, the uh, atmospheric uh, uh, weather uh, station, as well as the radiation observation. So these were actually fortunate because these we have the very very complementary data to understand other things besides what we get from the microcosmic. So here, as we see that overview of Micropus lidar observation of bondi layer, aerosols and clouds. Very, very different things I am going to talk. And that too also in the terms of the exchange processes. In fact, that will be developing on the exchange processes. We have very preliminary work, not much done. And overview why I am talking is that in the last Yeah, in the last uh, six years, and mostly the publication actually we have started the operation for, from 2016 to 18 that our MPL was actually operated and due to some reason the quartz crystal was actually gone bad and it was again returned to the for repair and it is again, we have actually got back on 2022 and we are operating now. So we, here overview, what I will be talking that we have got a number of publications in very good, very good journal and about eight publications and leading to three PhDs. So IIT motivated me that to work on this kind of overview, I talked to some experts, he told that one station data may not be useful much to write it through, but with, and then we can have more data and all these things, but still just I started for that process. So now you see this picture, every day you will encounter this picture, every day, mostly clear sky day. You cannot see this thing now, because mostly for the end and then the rain and all these things. Now you remove the aerosol from this. You remove the aerosol from this. Mostly you will see the blue sky. Blue sky <coughs> not be there because that also scattered from the aerosol. What will you see from that if the aerosol is not there? So what beautiful structure we see that clouds and of course the aerosol we cannot see now here. Even that except during that we have some foggy, foggy condition and all these things. You see here the boundary layer at about one to three kilometer, and that was marked. And we, I have shown just the pick of this micropulse radar and that laser fight to the atmosphere. So what we see that we can characterize from this uh, micropulse radar uh, this uh, aerosol cloud and boundary layer. So we can think of the study. This is this instrument is located at coastal station, so we can think of the characterizing or the making the characteristics of the atmospheric boundary layer. As well as from this, this data will be very high resolution and continuously operated. So we have very good resolution of the diagonal pattern of the area. So it can be also useful to validate or the, uh, uh, the yeah, uh, <coughs> compare this macro, this, uh, this uh, WRF simulation uh, uh, data. And next is that you can study the aerosol. See, I am not core researcher in aerosol, but we did that. First we wanted to see because we have the microbus radar there, then what we see that we also get the aerosol profiling from the calypso. So first what we thought that we can just see that how this microbus radar over our station or over the tropical vision actually gives that data. So first so we do that, we validate this calypso data. But biggest challenge was that there were many studies done. There were several studies done 
most European countries and the US and all the developed countries. But tropical region, there was, I think, except one three forty sir, the paper was there. There was no any paper. But still, we thought that because there is no observation, so we did that one, and we have done for the that will be sharing the results. And from there, further we seen that there are many uh, the aspects of the aerosol characteristics was there. So we also studied about tropospheric. Aerosol characteristics, and then from there, actually again connected to that one, the ele elevated aerosol layer characteristics. Next, we also operated that, then we could able to see the cirrus cloud. So, cirrus cloud, again, we had very good opportunity that to study the diagonal pattern of that. What, what I want to say is that MPL data, though, MPL do operated many places, continuous observation is lacking. There was no continuous observation. Our observation, we made. We were able to make that observation from 11 o'clock, uh, sorry, from 3 o'clock daytime to the next day, 11 o'clock continuously for 3 years. So that made us to study the diagonal pattern of the cirrus cloud. And there are many features were out there. What I want to say here is that the collaboration. Actually, now I am also feeling when we operate for 3 years and do the study, mostly the characterization kind of things we will be doing. But there are, uh, there are many expertise actually required. So what I open for that one, anybody can collaborate, I am free to share this data and we can collaborate that one. Now, the point, the point here I want to make, uh, uh, highlight that, this is the boundary layer structure the, over the plain and mountainous region. I will go, in, I will not go to in brief introduction, but what I want to say here is that the, most of the exchange will be happening uh, over the mountainous region as well over the plain during this diagonal course of the uh, evaluation of the ABM. Once, somehow, because aerosol will be trapped by the boundary layer. So there should be some mechanism that aerosol should go to the free troposphere. And that allows the formation of cloud, cloud rainfall and all other things that what we are actually talking about. So it should be that it should go because source of the aerosol is what? The surface, it does not come from the other except for some advective or the transboundary or the, uh, the advection. Once it is got to the free troposphere, now it depends on the life cycle of the, this aerosol. So, what is happening that life cycle of the aerosol is troposphere very small, maybe one, one day to one week, something. So, it will be mostly deposited. But somehow, because of the cloud condensation and nuclei and other mechanisms, because of the strong condensation, somehow go to the Upper troposphere, where we see the, the formation of this uh, the cirrus cloud. Cirrus cloud also you assume that mostly <coughs> formed by the heterogeneous circulation, means that we need some body. It is not the homogeneous circulation, only the very few percentage of that one. So that goes to the upper troposphere, and then there will be cirrus cloud formation. And once the cirrus cloud form, we know that cirrus cloud formation will lead to the decrease in the temperature. So then. Besides, I am not talking here this radiative impacts. What I am talking here is that it has chances to now finish dry and go to the stratosphere. Once it goes to the stratosphere, then there is a stratosphere then. What will happen that from there again it goes to over one. Because life cycle of the aerosol then increases then. Already there are uh, the, uh, there are several components where it can react and then stay for the one year or more and go to the polar region, come back again in the tropical. Many things are there. So many aspects of things can be studied. So now we are located here. Our SRM and PLE, oh sorry, in my body. We are located here that you can see that pink star where this we are located our instrument. And that is the <coughs> um, about uh, uh, about 23 kilometers from the um, the coast and about 12 km from the IMD Chennai, which is what we have shown. And you see that very beautiful picture of the uh, this uh, topography surrounding this Katalpulathur uh, region. And you can consider this is more the Chennai and uh, surrounding region. So we have the hills of about 100 to 200 meters. And our station located about 48 meters from the mean sea level. This was the container where we operated the microphone radar. And you can see this is the microphone radar here. So, but this is operated for three years. Now we have shifted to the concrete building because uh, the managing this uh, MPL over the container is very difficult. Now, so leader principle, what we, we, we how we do actually this one? What we have? What we do is that we trans, transmit laser. Laser is not that simple light. 
laser has this properties. It, it should be the correct. Is that and yeah. So once we once we once we add the high power and, and once we transmit that one, so you know that once we transmit, it interact with the particles in the present in the atmosphere. And you have might already studied about that. Once you send the light or the laser, it will be that attenuated due to the particle present as well as the power of the laser will be going down uh, that inversely proportional to the distance square. So that is what actually the we have this six. Uh, here the <coughs> equation. Now from this, you have two unknown things. One is that it came from the molecular scattering. Other is that attenuation of the laser. So two, the attenuation of the this laser is actually it will be exponentially decreasing. And then back scattering coefficient dr, which is there. So how we are going to obtain that? Because one equation and two unknown. That is the, the that is the difficult task. To do that one, then we need the different set of the instrument to obtain this equation. So from here we come to that how we are obtaining this one. So this now from there we can obtain this uh, normalized backscatter coefficient. Actually, software itself is the normalized backscatter coefficient. So you have that means that we do here calibration. Calibration of that means you have the you have to remove the background noise. You have to remove that. Uh, after call correction you have to do, and you have dead type correction you have to do, and also the overlap correction you have to do. So that we have to do before because when we operate energy levels will be not same, so we have to normalize with the energy. And overlap correction, what we do that, uh, you have to understand a little bit about the instrument that it is co located uh, the transmitter and receive system. So they will be just a little bit separated uh, from the receiver and transmitter. So once we transmit, all the uh, scatter radiation will not fall directly to the, your uh, transmitter from all the heights. So there will be what? There will be some region where there will be partially overlap. There will be partial receiving from the instrument. So, so then we have to do the overlap correction. Once you do all these things, we can fit this one to obtain this back scattering coefficient. That is what we call the Fermat plate experiment. Uh, sorry, a method. In that, what we have to do that? They have assumed for this one. Because to obtain this one, two unknown are there. One is the excipient coefficient, excipient coefficient, and one is the back scattering coefficient. The ratio of the back scattering coefficient by the external coefficient, what we call the uh, the data ratio. So that should be assumed constant. For the, because the atmosphere we have the two things: one is particle, molecular particle; other is the aerosol. For the molecular particle, this ratio is constant. It is coming about the eight pi. Other things are not constant. So we have to obtain that one. For that thing, we have to assume one something. So some value we have to give based on that location. So generally it is taken to be 30 and then it will, it will be, uh, solve this equation. Now, so what we do that, to, because although there will be the overlap factor or the, uh, the partial, let's see, partial over correction will be given for one location, it will change over the location to location. Okay. So what we do that, we have done several experiments putting this uh, real horizontal direction and we get that the overlap corrected and for that our station we get about 1.1 km. So you see that once you get the observation of the extension coefficient over that location we see that blue one is the is the corrected one and the red one is that uncorrected one so that nearly below 1 km there will be some bias so we have to correct those things. Like that we have to obtain this radar ratio so we have the sun photometer observation there we taken that one we do the iterative method and obtain that the lidar ratio and feed it that one to the equation to obtain the extension coefficient. So this is the flow chart. You can obtain that. Means that you should have the molecular uh, the constant to obtain and then you put that one also obtain that lidar ratio and then you will get the uh, uh, table of the extension coefficient. And we drag this way extension coefficient. Now in a <coughs> The work we have done, the validation of that one, you can see that how our lidar data, sorry, how our lidar actually showing the profile and the counter profile you can see here, uh, the left panel, and you see that the observation without cloud, observation with the mid troposphere cloud, and observation with the serous cloud. And also we have the simultaneous passes of this uh, Calypso observation. So what we did that, how this profiles actually from the Calypso and how the profile from the our lidar, we have compared and we see that different uh, cloud condition or different sky condition. So for clear sky condition, we see that here comparison is done and we have obtained about uh, 
Comparison with the others observation is that uh, about about minus 14 to uh, is uh, 18 percent. So the minus 14 is within ABL and 18 percent above the ABL that what actually we have. And we compare with the other study but done. So it is our study was linearly similar to that one. Then we have a later we have studied about the characteristics of the aerosol. In that part we see that the different season we have that. Uh, Sorry, not Okay, different season we have seen the profiles and then we see that. The laser point will be longer. So, it's just for changing. See here that three, four for the different season. So, what we see that, you can see that very nice aerosol evolution here. What we see that winter season, you see that most of the aerosol is trapped within the area. You go to the pre monsoon season, you see that the aerosols are within the area as well as above it. So, that's what because of the the transported one, and that is what we uh, elevated aerosol layer. Monsoon season because there is strong convection, there is aerosol layer is going up to the up to the three to four kilometer. And north is monsoon season again, it is similar to the area, uh, sorry, similar to the winter season. So when we see the all the profile for three years, what we see very nice characteristics. Winter season ideal ideal one that is going to be the exponential decrease from the surface. Once you go to this pre monsoon that that is not actually the completely ideal one. It is not exponential decreasing because of the Many times there are frequent occurrence of the elevated aerosol layer. So you have to mind that when we calculate the AOD, may not be the same. We cannot always take the surface observation and see that the AOD is same because there will be contribution from the uh, the aerosol above it. So what we see that we see that here we calculated the AOD from this uh, field troposphere as well as ABM. You see that during winter season, the contribution of AOD from the uh, the ABR is more during winter and winter season and monsoon season and the northeast monsoon season. Uh, but pre monsoon season, you can see that the contribution coming equal in March and then lesser uh, in April and May. So, what is happening that contribution of the AOD is more from the pilotroposphere. The, uh, the so, here we have seen that there is a contribution from the ER, so elevated regional layer. So, then we started to see that how this aerosol elevated aerosol layer there. But what is happening that there is no method to identify the elevated aerosol layer. So we did this, uh, we did actually work on the zero crossing method. We tried several methods. There is a provision transfer method and then so WCT method we applied and then there are several gradient methods all this thing. But we could able to get very nice uh, identification from the zero differential zero crossing method. So that's what actually we have done and we, try, we got that there are three types of the, uh, the uh, uh, ER can be uh, uh, ER seen over our location. So then this is what I have shown here. We also compared with the Calypso and then identification we have given and then also obtain the, uh, the occurrences. So you see the different years of the occurrences. So what we see that here we have shown it is number of days of observation. <coughs> yeah. And then finally what we have done is that we have we made the statistics. So different types of the aerosol and uh, elevated aerosol layer uh, uh, for the the 2016-2018, and uh, we also calculated here that what is the contribution. What we seen earlier is that what is the contribution of AOD from the troposphere and ABL. Now we see during the pre monsoon season how what is the contribution of the ER uh, in the uh, AOD. So what we see that. Throughout the pre monsoon, what we see that the ER contribution is more than the ABL contribution. What we have seen, sorry, what we have shown there. Now, to see that what plays actually are the AOD contribution in the ER, what are the actually types of the aerosol. So, we can get that subtypes from the Calypso observation. So, Calypso observation will give this virtual, this virtual mass, uh, mass uh, BFM data, virtual mass, sorry, sorry. So BFM data. So from that one, um, you can get different subtypes of the aerosol. So what we see that the you can see here we have sorry. Okay. So yeah, you have that gray color, 27 percent within year that is dominated by the dust aerosol. So how it is there? So you see that we have plotted here the counter plot, the ABL height from the era five data, and as well as the wind velocity from the era five data. You see that. The ABL height is higher over this African continent 
if higher ideal is because of the uh, higher temperature and that will lead to the more dust over this up to the uh, the area so once it is get uh, the transported to that one means that the contribution is coming from those location to our location to have the more elevated ozone layer that is composed of the dust now i think how much that one minute so i'll skip this one i wanted to show here that avial study because it was i was thinking to make that connection the how to exchange and all this thing so but yeah so this is what actually cluster boundary layer what i saw here and then how to obtain that cluster boundary layer means the thermal interval boundary layer how it is grow h and all these things that we discuss in this work and uh, yeah so then here we have shown the occurrences you see the nice very nice observation you can see that this this there is a drop in the signal in between so if it is not tavl then there will be very nice continuous observation of the growth of the avl in terms of the aerosol but when the, it will pass that sea breeze then what happens that very nicely you can see that there is a drop in signal you can see that so sea breeze actually uh, there will be formation of the double mixed layer of kind of things so then to tackle that double mixed layer we have studied this thermodynamic structure using this um, Uh, covariance method. So then, different mixing again is better for the uh, the exchange processes. That was actually our aim to study here. So we see over over a station that there is a formation of not only double mixed layer, but there are formation of the multiple mixing layer, multiple with three or two to three mixed layer. So then, when we have the single mixed layer, the exchange will be the uh, the exchange will be the uh, the easier. But when three multiple layer is there, means that the exchange may be difficult and go. Then there will be the different uh, dynamical process for that one. So like that, how this uh, uh, this double mixed layer going to change from the uh, the double mixed layer to the single mixed layer, and the, from the uh, single mixed layer to double mixed layer during different sky condition that also we have explored. <coughs> Then we are coming to that uh, the cirrus cloud. A cirrus cloud, as I showed, so told you that formation is because of only that because there was also we have to study very interesting result has come in this one. There was no. observation for the diagonal structure and we have seen how it is forming one is that i was telling you about that because of the homogeneous nucleation other the heterogeneous nucleation so we have discussed so here we have shown that the both process means that it is the peaks of the cirrus cloud occurs coming coming in the uh, you can see here uh, the time time is t given so evening time the peaks are there for the single cirrus cloud single cirrus cloud layer and the multiple cirrus cloud layer goes to more in evening time So that's what we have discussed. What play the role for that one? So you can see that we have analyzed the temperature here below that one. The temperature at the pro-cause level. So that means 199 Kelvin. I think it will be more discussion in that one. If it goes to the 199 Kelvin, then what happens? That free drying process will be initiated. So then that will lead to the formation of that one. The free drying process is that means more in the situation will be more. So for that kind of temperature, will be there will be multiple type of. But for the single occurrences, uh, that heterogeneous situation will be there. so that's what we uh, seen in this paper and also we calculated that <coughs> how much time actually the cirrus cloud form above the top wall that is more important because once it is forming above the top wall then what is happening that that will lead to the takes the along with this dry water vapor to the aerosol also that actually we have some percentage there from here <coughs> so summary of our work here is that what we seen is that we, uh, we validated this calab data Calculate level one and two over the optical region, and also we have studied about the vertical structure of the aerosol profiles. Also, we studied about this uh, contribution of AOD from ABL and free troposphere, and contribution of AOD from ABL and ER during the pre-monsoon. Uh, we also studied about that ABL structure, uh, such as thermal interval boundary layer, and how the thermal interval boundary layer grows with the fetch, and also the how the Double mixed layer form, and the double mixed layer in the permanent <laughs> structure of the uh, over this uh, the coastal station uh, over Chennai, and then we looked into the how this structure being actually maintained. So for that thing, actually we studied the uh, the thermodynamic structure, and we have proposed also the advection and convective uh, the parameters leading to thermodynamic structure <coughs> that we could not able to discuss much. <coughs> Along with that, because this observation gives plenty of the uh, the things to uh, to to do the to do the model. To explore, to validate their model and all these things. Our for our station, we also validated, and we see that uh, five schemes we have already done. So M, Y, and N two scheme actually works better for our location. 
And also that diamond structure of this uh, the serous cloth and that actually leading to this change of water vapor and all these things. I think many more scopes are there. So uh, as you are the core uh, aerosol researcher, I think something you can think of more in that one. So please read this paper and something data is required, please contact me. I will give the data free to you to work on that one. <coughs> and this is the my core team, this is scholars. Three of them actually already PhD got and they are actually somewhere for the one is they already got the position in IDM. So and the five are there working. Mostly one will be submitting the PhD soon. And I also thank my all collaborator. One collaborator is sitting here, Dr. Pandit Karitsar. Actually, from the beginning, I am he is actually the team actually they guided us to do the work. And these are the activities. There are many photographs that activities actually we all launch the radio sonde also. We have the radio sonde here. Uh, we want to get the ozone sonde so that we want to do the experiment along with this to study the exchange processes more. We can't hear you, you have to keep the mic. This is so not working. The power, power is off. So uh, this is the recently workshop I did, 23-24 uh, March. There was very uh, the good number of audience. That was the project actually I did not discuss the MPL has come from this satellite satellite <coughs> project. Uh, that was the coordinated by Professor Diener and all then he was there as a director of research and then I actually taken this study further. So then uh, this, this work was actually done in five to six years and there was the concluding workshop and there were lots of participants and very good actually works of thematic workshop was done at Chennai and uh, yeah so that is what picture is there. And this report actually submitted and published, will be published, I think you'll be seeing this part in the letter if you read that one. It will be coming in letter 61. I think yesterday I said it was not there, so, but it is correct, some things are there. Okay. And this, I welcome all of you. Hopefully, some of you please join for this. I also have another project, a SPARC project for my MHRD. So, for that thing, actually, this project is ending on 30th September. So, I rush to again to do some workshop to finish the project. Otherwise, I could do next year and also. So, there are, I have some call. Please register and also online parts, uh, online also you can register. There will be one person for you, the transport of bonding layer pollutants and free atmosphere will be also covered in that. And I have also three, this one, the pre-conference lecture. Some of the